Hey, it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're zooming in and focusing in on a very fun and interesting topic when it comes to dealing with difficult people. People who might have harassed you, bully you, made you to feel less than, sabotaged you, gaslighted you, splitted meaning basically talking about you behind your back, talking smack, talking crow, whatever it is that they're doing, the negative energy the, you know, uh, the rumor mill, whatever it is that you want to call it, or just down out feeling betrayed by someone who took you for a ride, took you to the dry cleaners, basically sold you a bill of goods, but did not deliver. In other words, they were false in terms of what they could promise and commit to you. And when we talk about people who live a lie, or in the M. Scott book, People of the Lie, M. Scott Peck dis discusses that all really mental illness has as its root or pathology people who are living a lie. In other words, living in denial, living out of unexpressed or unworked through anger, childhood abandonment issues. In other words, they're acting out some sort of facade or mask to accommodate for that or uh, compensate for it, but yet other people are paying the price because of this issue. And then it comes out in terms of um, yelling, raging, uh, people becoming enabling or codependent of them and not knowing really how to distinguish yourself. And so when we talk about really moving through these difficult relationships, you must have an anchor. You must have something that you can always go to and call upon that always gets your you back, your juice back, your positive mindset back. Basically like a winning attitude, like, yes, I'm here. Yes, I am doing this. Yes, I am magnificent. I deserve a good life and I'm taking action now. I'm no longer laying down and taking it. I'm no longer your doormat. I'm no longer your wallpaper. I'm no longer part of the brick you know, brick in the wall that you're speaking to, I am free, I am liberated, and I am me. So this really t takes takes a real lot of courage and energy oftentimes to move through or make a pronouncement um, to extricate yourself or pull yourself away from damaging or emotionally manipulative situations because there can be such a positive energy oftentimes that is attributed to it. There might have been some payoff. In other words, love relationships, family relationships, work relationships where these people were at your workplace and it's time for you to stand up and you know say some difficult things or ask some difficult questions. But to do this, you must get a frame in mind where you are not subordinate. You are not lower than. No matter what the covert narcissist or psychopath may lead you to believe or make it seem as if you are less than because they are bigger, brighter, louder, taller, whatever it is, their skin is darker, their skin is brighter, their body is bigger, yours is smaller, whatever sort of meaning that you have assigned, which is to bend on the negative, on the downplay for you, realize that that is all a meaning that you have created in your mindset in order to adjust to this type of person. In other words, the, the, the mind, the physiology has assigned a meaning as a result of this relationship, which puts you in a, a cognitive frame, which is lower. Begin to remove that lower mental frame and begin to see people on equal or indifferent or a neutral stance. Do not see yourself as lower than. That is to be, you know, nod thinking, negative orderly direction thinking. And you need to adjust that and you can through cognitive reframing and getting a anchor for yourself. So every time you start to feel lower, then begin to make an adjustment. A lot of people say, you know, doing this with your finger and I am magnificent. Every time you start to feel that, remind yourself of who you are. You might need to do this consciously. This is a tool to help reset and re-anchor your physiology so it's on the positive. You need to grow those neurons neurologically and keep your mind sharp and do this and pick yourself up. You need to be proactive here. Otherwise, people, their lives, their feelings begin to go on the downgrade. They begin to backslide. 
and this very much needs to be consciously adjusted. And in the beginning, you might need to make this kind, you know, this conscious adjustment when you're dealing with people or dealing with people of the opposite sex or your bosses or your family member, whoever is who is trying to downtroid you, realize that they, you know, it it is all in the anchoring that you can reset this. So you might just make this with your with your um uh your your middle finger and your thumb. Um, you, you might do it like this. You might do it like this. That's why you see, you know, people sitting in the yoga play, you know, poses, doing this, meditating. It is because you're resetting your neurological hardware to the positive and entering into more positive, orderly direction thinking, and then getting away from the nod thinking, the negative, orderly direction thinking. I developed these terms uh, quite extensively in the book that I'm working on, and it's still in the process. I know I've had a lot of viewers wondering when it's going to be out. It is still in the uh, composition and creation phase, so hopefully in the next couple of months here, and the website also is going to be coming soon, where we'll have more of a, a structured support center for people and to kind of discourse you know, um, online. And so that is also in the works here with the Peace and Harmony channel. So it's so important to do that. And basically, as you do that, you rise to the occasion. You, and instead of going down, you rise to the occasion. That's what anyone who has had to use a little bit of audacity, hoopla, spunk, uh, whatever you want to call it, a little mojo, you need to step up your, your game, your emotional game. Step up your emotional um, internal real estate to feel positive and begin to just hold that mindset. Just begin to hold it and you might need to consciously get it generating, but as you repeat this again and again, you will eventually begin to learn this and reset that neurology so then you always will feel magnificent. You'll always feel wonderful. You will always feel inspired or you'll feel happy, content, and secure according to the anchor that you have set in yourself. And oftentimes, you know, you can pair this with something that you hold on to. Some people wear a cross. Um, you know, I am, I am saved by the Savior, and they might have that as their anchor. Um, they might have other things that represent strength to them, and they will anchor that. I definitely recommend when you get your recovery gift, I talk about how important it is to have recovery by committee. If, if people aren't your go-to right now. You're not taking comfort in relationships because you've been so hurt and you're so disgusted. You know, you don't like the thought of getting together with anyone. It doesn't give you comfort because this person gave you such discomfort. How can you even think of going there right now? You can get yourself a pet. You can get yourself a new plant, um, a recovery gift to you that shows that you're on the mend. And always let that be an anchor to you, a meaningful symb symbolism and um, actual symbolic gesture that you give to yourself that lets you know you are recovered and you're on the road to the good life. So every time you look at it, it'll prime your subconscious mind. It'll give you the comfort and the joy and the peace and stability and security and the happiness and kind of the feel good feelings that you feel you had lost or you are grieving through after you've been in a relationship with a very difficult person, such as a covert narcissist or a psychopath, someone who is very difficult to get along with and just get the facts straight with because they are so manipulative and controlling and they don't want that ever to be challenged. Um, and so when you also do this, I want you to realize how important it is that you have a why or a reason why this is so. In other words, I have a reason here. This is my purpose. This is what I have been denied, and I am now going into positive orderly direction thinking, which is more in line with my purpose and what I consciously want, so I've got to pull it out of myself and make sure that I am on the mend. I am doing it. I am taking action. The key is taking the action. Sitting back and thinking about it and planning is great that we do in the recovery pages where we spill it all out first thing and see what it is that's really making us tick or what make, made us untick or what really ticked us off. And getting into the root of what had happened, solidifying that commitment you have to yourself that never again, I understand what happened, that was brutal, we're on the men now. And then you get the, you know, the positive energy going, even though it might feel a little bit shaky, I call it the, you know, the emotional sea legs where you feel kind of maybe afraid to go and do this. You might feel afraid to go on 
your, your uh, recovery and walk. You might be afraid to change your physiology. You might be afraid to eat well. You might be afraid to get a comfort gift. But as you do it again and again and again with repetition and experience, it will build the security within you where it eliminates and you have no doubt. You, you are now filled with certainty and you're filled with the quantum field energy which presents options and choices and it is more uh, nutritive to what you are looking to. In other words, it's providing you the positive neural connections and you're gauging in neuroplasticity that is part of the recovery process. And then once you do that, you'll, and you do this consistently, you will then begin to attract and be able to speak clearly with other people for hitherto you felt intimidated by or not good enough. You're able to give them a, a, you know, a solid smile, a, so, a solid nod. You're able to converse with people, strangers who you don't even know over at the grocery store. Hi, how are you? A beautiful day today. And you can share a, you know, a common acquaintance or a wave or hello or how are you. And you begin to then attract these more positive people. They will notice it because it's radiating, radiating from your energetic field. Your energetic field does extend eight feet out around you. It is something that people can feel. Just when you can feel someone who has a lot of aggression, you can feel kind of the aggression coming off of their hands or rating, aiding off of their head if they're very cerebral. Um, oftentimes the covert narcissist, uh, the psychopath, uh, these people are um, quite uh, cerebral in nature. And oftentimes the relationship that you might have had with them is very cerebral in nature also, meaning not very heart-centered or not very authentic or where you're living the truth because your heart holds the truth. The mind can, you know, reason and justify, you know, reasons why something should be your so or I really want this relationship to work so that's your head coming into play and trying to make it so and, you know, kind of get out of tune with the heart. The heart, you know, the path of the heart is the path to truth. So you really do need to take that and begin to anchor that within you. Even if it's getting a heart charm, having a heart poster, a heart rock that is like a paperweight, something that, you know, that brings you that that good life energy, whether it's a red heart, a pink heart, a white heart, you know, get it on that, that feeling of recovery for you, what it anchors to you and what it means to you, that you are lovable, you are worthy, and that you are on the, mend, the path to mend for good. And you're solidifying that commitment when you take action and you anchor that within yourself and you really, you know, call, you call that emotion into your body, you know, by bringing it in, however you anchor it and hold it in, you know, most common is like this. Once again, you don't have to read a whole yoga manual to practice this. You can, you know, the, your, your anchor might be, I am safe. And you're just holding this. I am safe and you're feeling safe. And then you validate to your system and then your system feels it. So you recalibrate it from the, the fear or whatever it is that you've been going through, you know, or you've kind of had memorized and repeated so many times. You're re-solidifying a new feeling and anchoring this into yourself. You need to take moments to do this consciously. In fact, you might make a, a little comment in your recovery notebook that if you have that, I definitely recommend. We're well into 2018, well into, uh, we've got our toes dipped into February here, 2018. I would highly recommend you focus on anchoring exercises also. So you anchor it, anchor it, anchor it. A couple, you know, even if it's several tens of times a day, you will, as I mentioned, you will consciously need to do this, this practice, but then eventually as you repeat it, it'll autom you'll automatically be primed or automatically be anchored when you see that recovery gift, when you do this with your body, you'll just be able to re, you know, avert yourself from the reactive mode or the down mode or the depressed mode or I don't have any energy mode. You'll be able to anchor that and then your mind will then be able to, your mind loves to stay in patterns. It loves to repeat itself. So if you anchor the positive, then it'll anchor the patterns of positivity and then you'll find solutions. You'll come up with solutions so your, your mind and your heart will be working together to assist you. So for example, you know, energy, I might get some vitamins, I might get some, you know, uh, those vitamin C packets and drink those in the morning and really get my energy up. I might take some B12, I might be drinking more water or juice or getting away from the pop, those alkaline uh, foods, getting, you know, healthier foods around to give me more 
uh, of the enzymes, the natural water in the fruits and vegetables that give you real energy. You start to find the solutions rather than going into the negative orderly direction of thinking when you have those anchors. So use those this week. Begin to call upon those, whether it's health or safety or love or vibrance or security. Anchor that within you and then also get yourself that recovery gift. Something once a week, and I, I discuss this in length in my book, but you really need to get yourself that one little something that tells you to yourself that you are on the path, even if it's little by little. You want to build a chair, so first thing you do is you get your your hammer, or you start eyeing wood, you start looking at grains, you start talking to salespeople, you start looking for a place to do your workshop. Maybe you can convert that little back room or that, that basement into a workshop or your attic, or maybe you want to just sew or quilt or do needlepoint or paint. You know, maybe you can convert these little dead space areas of your home into these places where you can anchor in your positivity and your creativity because when you do that and take action you are on the the positive early direction thinking and then the great creator will rise to meet you it's like a a divination rod it's like a little bit of you're sending out a beacon you're sending out a dart you're sending out to the universe that you are ready to change and the universe will provide you the solutions you just need to anchor it and then make choices and decisions and behaviors little by little like our viewers say and like i re recommend also baby steps towards building towards that which you want so you can take those little steps do your recovery dates you know go to the, the fabric store go to the theater go to the workshops you know look what is in your area begin to go to the library do these little things it just takes a little bit of research even if research is your first step or phone calls, amen to that. Go ahead and do that. Go to the pet store, look at some puppies, look at some cats, go to a local uh, shelter and see, you know, how's it going there. You know, you might even just even research that online. You can find some adorable uh, pets who are needing a home and they would love to give you some love. It's just about the anchoring, and, you know, I am satisfying my needs. And then your body, your mind will begin to automatically generate it. That is what... The greatest empowering engine is when you when you get your heart and your mind aligned. But when you're in a relationship with a very difficult person, oftentimes it's all cerebral, it's all in the head. You need to let that go and become more centered and grounded using this anchoring technique. You certainly can do this. You can also research it online if you want to learn more about it. But there's all sorts of information and it does work. Try this tool today. You can do it. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.